Hey guys, welcome back. I wanted to make a video today on five ways to help you stay positive and remain positive while going through something difficult. I went through a time a few years ago where a lot of medical things were happening and I kept getting bad news and it got to the point where anytime something happened, I was like, oh my God, I, I can't, I can't mentally, physically, emotionally take this anymore. Like it was just too much. So whether you're using this during a traumatic time, during just for anxiety, depression, um, recovery for me when I had my eye surgery and I couldn't see it all out of either eye, I use some of these techniques to kind of help with recovery because you kind of, whether you are recovering from surgery or some type of traumatic event or an accident, um, it's important to stay positive. It's important to make sure your body's feeling good. Make sure you're getting rest and you're not stressing. Those things are so important for recovery. So let's hop right in. Number one, you need to go outside. <laughs> you don't have to go for a walk. You just need to go outside. Be outside. I, when I had my eye surgery, I would walk a mile to the grocery store and just back. I wouldn't go inside. The little bit I could see out of one eye after um, like a few weeks or a few days, that was enough for me to just walk up the sidewalk and then back a mile. And I felt so much better just getting your blood going, um, just circulating. You know, have you ever noticed like when you're feeling sick, the more you lay in bed, the worse you feel. And then when you get up, you take a shower, you're like, oh man, I feel better. That is so important just to get your blood circulating, get some fresh air, get some sun, get some vitamin D. Uh, it's it's truly, truly important. When I had my uh, foot surgery, I would hobble out onto our balcony and I would just sit out on the balcony. I would just listen to the cars driving by and I would just close my eyes and I would just sit there. It doesn't have to be sunny or warm or nice. Like even if it's cold out, bundle up, go outside. You need that fresh air. You need that that just even if it's cloudy you're still getting sunlight that sun is still coming through just just go outside i'm not saying go for a run i'm not saying work out i'm not saying you know if you want to do some weights that'll work really well too but just go outside number two get it out scream it write it I used to record myself and out of that came some of my um, older videos with my eye surgery recovery and just the ones where I was crying a whole lot. Those were videos that were like like video diaries for me and then I decided to put them into a video and, and edit them in and, and put it on YouTube, but get it out. I went through a really hard time in my life when I was in my early 20s and you would not believe this shit I wrote in a journal. Scribbles. It was like I was possessed. Just scribbles and things like scratched out and just like I, like I was yelling at myself just getting it out. And you know what really helps too? Getting it out on paper and then getting rid of that paper. Putting all those negative feelings and emotions and that stress onto a piece of paper and then burning it. Or you know, with, with parental consent, if you're, you know, young, um, or just ripping it up, throwing it out, just getting it out of you and then destroying it. There's such like a mental release with that. Um, it, it's crazy. So a huge thing, you just, you just need an outlet. You need to get it out. Make sure you register it. You realize what it is. You accept it because that's important. You accept it. You figure out why it's there. Why am I feeling this way? And then you get rid of it. Number three, be social. I'm not saying go out to a bar if you're recovering from something or if you are struggling with anxiety or depression, that is the last thing you wanna do. And believe me, I am kind of struggling with that right now, especially after being in quarantine and just lockdown and you know everything. It's so hard for me to leave the house. It's so hard for me to be social. I just wanna stay home. I wanna be on the couch. I don't wanna do anything. Um, be social. Tell yourself that every day you're gonna text five people and text those five people. And I guarantee you, if those are people you haven't talked to in a while, they'll respond, they'll wanna to talk to you. Um, and then it'll grow into like a little bit of a conversation flower <laughs> and you'll have that social aspect. You need that social aspect, especially if you're struggling with anxiety and depression, you have to push yourself 
to do these things. And I'm telling you, if you, I mean, if you have it in you to go out, meet up with a friend for coffee, you know, meet up, you know, <laughs> I don't believe in lying, but if you were like me where you're like, I don't want to go out because then I feel like I'm stuck somewhere, just go out and just or make plans and be like, I have, I could do three o'clock, but I have to leave by five. Set that tone. And whether you have something or not, just, just set that tone. And then you're with this friend and you know in the back of your mind, I have two hours. You know what I mean? And you just push yourself. And then come five o'clock, you go, hey, I need to get going and whatever. Even if you go back home and you go right back to the couch, you had that social moment. You had that socialization. You were out in the world and that is going to help you mentally so much. But even calling a family member or a friend or texting, if you're not much of a caller, you don't want to meet anyone in person, um, just text shoot a friend a text. Hey, how are you? How's it going? Or get on Instagram and message someone on Instagram. Just have that socialization with someone that's gonna just feel so much better mentally. And that's, you know, the more you do it, it's because you're not doing it. Because you're not doing it is why it feels so awkward. If you don't do it, you're not going to want to do it. You're not going to want to be social with people and you can't just be a hermit and you can't just sit at home and wait to die. Number four, listen to TED Talks. I, when I couldn't see, all I ever played on my Echo, which I don't want to say the name because she'll activate, but on my Amazon Echo, I would just say, play me motivational speaking TED Talks, play me motivational this, play me inspirational this, and you just let her do it. And you just sit there and you listen and you take it in. And the more you have that going through your mind, the less negative thoughts you have going through your mind. And the more, you know, like the, people talk about creating neural pathways, right? With every thought you create a neural pathway, you can create a negative neural pathway, you can create a positive one. So with more positivity that you're feeding your brain and you're feeding your ears and you're hearing it and you're taking it in, the more positive these things are, the more it's going to help you create positive neuropathways and the more you are going to think positively. Tapping. Tapping is huge. I'm going to link some tapping videos below. It's absolutely crazy how tapping works. And there's a few different people that do it different ways. Usually when I tap, I tap here, 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 and then I do the wrist thing. Um, so I'm gonna um, link videos below where they explain it much better and they talk about it. But basically what it does is it just kind of, it makes you focus on the emotion that you're feeling or something that's been bothering you. Or you can take something traumatic that's happened to you or something you're feeling in the moment. And you, as you you tap, you think about that, you hone in, you, you think about that feeling, you hold on to it. And you, you literally tap it away. So you tap those spots. And there's some that do different. There's some that do like on your ribs, um, in like your sternum. They, it all depends like who you watch. My therapist actually did it with me and it helped so much. So it's basically what you do is you kind of just hone in. You hold on to that emotion. And as you're tapping, it it just goes away. It, it just becomes like it's, it's a numb feeling. It's almost like you know it's there, but you no longer let that control your life. And you can tap it away as much as you need. I've tapped away stuff while I was driving. I was getting anxiety and I'm sitting there tapping while I'm driving. Or tapping at a doctor's office. Like, I'm nervous. I'm just going to tap. Tap, tap, tap. You know, it's huge. It is, it's a huge thing. I don't know why I don't hear about people tapping. But I don't know enough about it to sit here and explain it to you fully and teach you about it. Um, I do want to research more about, like, why it works and how the brain you know, how it works with the brain and, and why it makes you feel the way it does. But it's something I've been doing for a long, long, long time. And I think that's a huge, huge thing that you could do that will help with negative emotions, those bad feelings. It's helped me through panic attacks. Um, and you just, you have to, you have to address the emotion and hold on to it. Kind of like when I was talking about writing it out and getting it out, you have to address it. You have to understand that this is the emotion I'm feeling. You have to um, accept it to do anything with it. All right, guys, that is it. I hope you guys like these quick videos. I really enjoy making them because I feel like, <laughs> I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Whatever you're going through, 
just remember that you can control your mind. You can control what you're thinking, what you're feeling. It's up to you. And it's okay to get help, to ask for help, to, to look for different outlets online. It's okay. And it's okay to feel what you're feeling. That's the other thing is don't run away from what you're feeling. Accept it. Accept it. Realize why you're feeling it. And then you can get rid of it. That's the first step to getting rid of these emotions is knowing that it's there and not trying to fight it off or ignore it or bottle it up. That's the worst. I do that often still. But I hope that you guys are doing well. And I hope that if you're recovering, you recover well. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.